Hi, welcome. My name is Grace. I'm the Paisley Stitcher here on Floss Tube as well as Instagram. And this is my channel about cross stitch. This is Floss Tube number seven, and I am back. I haven't filmed since February 20th, and I'm so happy to be back and share all kinds of good things that I have from the cross stitch world. Um, it's been way too long. Life has gotten in the way, but like I said, I'm really happy to be back. And thank you so much for either returning to my channel or watching me for the first time. As I said, I have so much to share with you today. Since we last visited, I have been to three retreats. I want to share with you some of the research, very little research that I've done, but it's interesting, on a German Saxony sampler. I want to share with you um, information from the Bristol Three Retreat and a lot of patterns and finishes from one of my most favorite designers, GGR. So as I said, I've been to three retreats. The first one was Stitch Nanigans, and that was in Las Vegas. And that was hosted by 1884 Stitchery. I also attended a small retreat at the Attic in Mesa, Arizona in April and then the Bristol Three Retreat at the Attic in May. So I have lots of goodies to share from that. I also have some finishes and whips, and I thought since we haven't visited in a while, I would start with a finish and my whips, the things I've worked on since we last met. So my finish, I have stuff all over here. It's pretty funny. I attended in January the Sampler Symposium at the Attic in Mesa, Arizona. One of the presenters was Nicola Parkman from Hands Across the Sea Samplers, and she um, gave us several patterns as part of the retreat. One, and these are generally exclusive, so the one I'm gonna show you, the finish I'm gonna show you, is an exclusive. And at some point, I'm sure that she will come out with the pattern. So when I say exclusive, that means that it was only available at the retreat. And this is Sarah Millthorpe. And I am so into this sampler. This is one of my all time favorites. Look at the motif. There's two of those, one in each corner, as well as that red house. Look at that red house. I'm all about the red house. So I stitched Sarah on 46 count dirty teacup by Needle and Flax, and I used the Swa 103 silk. And as I said, this is one of my absolute all time favorites. Such a fun stitch. And what's interesting to me, the trees next to the red house are very similar to the trees. I think the, the, the girl's last name is Dickinson. It was an exclusive by Hands Across the Sea for Hobby House Needleworks. And I finished it <clears throat> and I can't remember the name, but the trees are very similar in that um, sampler. But I have never seen a motif like the one in each corner. Now, the words are over one. So anywhere you see that navy blue and the words, those are stitched all over one, which was actually fun and challenging. And I really like how they came out. Yeah, I need to get her framed. So that's Sarah Millthorpe by Hands Across the Sea. And Hopefully Nicola will be releasing her in January, 2024. I don't know how long an exclusive um, lasts, but it was an exclusive to Sampler Symposium. Other things I have worked on. Now I have not ironed any of my projects. If I ironed them, I, I wouldn't have time to make a floss tube. So please excuse me that they're wrinkled, but know that I love them and I'm stitching on them. So these are my works in progress since we last met. And this is Mary Wigglesworth, 1812, also by Hands Across the Sea Samplers. You know I love red. 
and I'm stitching Mary on 40 count marbled pointer by XJU Design, and I'm using the Soidage Silk Thread. This has been such a fun stitch. So again, 40 count using silk threads, and this row was so much fun to stitch with all the red flowers. When I was at the attic in May, they also do framing and a lady was meeting with the framer. She had several samplers she was getting framed and she had Mary Wigglesworth completed. Just really lit a fire under me to pull Mary out again and start stitching her. So that's Mary Wigglesworth. I have also stitched on, and this was a couple of months ago. Um, this is by Carriage House Samplings, The Shores of Hawk Run Hollow. Now I've showed this before and I've talked about, well, let me back up. I started this two to three years ago before I fell in love with 40 and 46 count linen and using one strand of thread. So on the 36 count, I am using two strands. I love the coverage on the shores of Hawk Run Hollow. I'm not thrilled with how my stitches look, but you know, for me, I feel like when I'm using one strand on 40 or 46 count, my stitches are much more neat. They, they is it lay or lie? Forgive me. English was not my best subject in school. Um, the threads don't lie as nicely as a single strand. So there we are. I've worked on a couple of boxes since the last time we met. This is a lot of stitching, but so much fun. I love nautical motifs. I'm stitching us on 36 count. I think it's Weeks Dye Works straw, I think. Um, it's so much fun. And, and you do get a sense of accomplishment doing a project like this in that every time I fill, finish a square, it feels like a finish. Now, I think I am, I'm halfway, a little more than halfway. I still have three, four, five more boxes. But I do pick it up and my goal when I pick it up is to finish a box. And it's probably time for me to pick it up again because it's been a couple of months, but it's so much fun. And I'm sticking with the 36, or, or the two threads on the 36, because there's no way I'm restarting that thing on 40. I am way too far in. Okay. Another Hands Across the Sea that I've worked on is Jane Hopkins, 1875. Now I see Karen, the monogamous stitcher, who's on floss tube. She is moving right along on this. Um, and I've seen some other people working on it. And it's so exciting because this is such a gorgeous sampler. So here is mine. And I'm working on 40 count. 40 count light hazelnut by XJU Design. You can buy her linen on Etsy. She's out of Hungary. Um, and I'm using silk uh, Averisua thread. And I think since we last met, I've connected the border. The, hey, it's time to celebrate if those borders match, right? And I've got the tree in the bottom. Still have a ways to go, but oh, just love this. I love all the detail and the solid stitching. Takes me back to Paula Vaughn in the 80s and some of her patterns that were solid stitching and flowers but I just love the colors and all of the detail. Look at that when you pull it back. This is an amazing piece of stitching or the pattern is amazing. And that's Jane Hopkins, 1875 by Hands Across the Sea. And I'll show you my current whip. My current whip. 
um, has to tie into this realization I've had lately. I really enjoy colorful big samplers, colorful big samplers, but I like funky samplers too. I like something that's different and is quirky and and I'm sure the little girls who stitched these samplers would not agree with me that their motifs were funky, but some of them just make me giggle and I so enjoy stitching them. And the most recent one that I have started, I picked up at the attic when I was there in April because I was like, I really wanna stitch something different, something that I haven't seen many people stitch. And so I picked up GGR. This is ATS 1871. This is a Saxony sampler. Okay, so I looked at this and I'm a little confused about what this is or how, to, how is this the whole thing or is this? So this long narrow side is the entire thing and where those lines are, that's what I have worked on, not finished yet. Now this is an unfinished sampler. See that bird at the top? The rest of that row, and this is a band sampler, the rest of that row is empty. So I decided I am gonna start right here with the lion. And this section is really just a, an enhancement of the bigger motifs or four rows of the bigger motifs. So look at that lion. I have never seen a pattern with a lion on it before. So on the back of the pattern, I'm gonna to read to you what GGR put. She says, this is a reproduction of an unfinished German sampler, which bears typical characteristics of a Saxon sampler. It's long and narrow, definitely long and narrow. Stitched upon fine linen, has several lines with geometric and geometric and patterns, alphabets and wide bands with single motifs. The sampler is signed and dated ATS 1871. Stitches used are cross over two and one thread, back stitch, a few Algerian eyelets and satin stitches. I'm not to those yet. And the palette has 34 colors. Now I'm stitching this on 40 count and I'll show it to you in a minute. Um, 40 count Thornfield by Needle and Flax. And I'm using the called for over dyed cotton threads. These are all gentle arts and they're over dyed cotton threads. There's 34 colors. So it has funky motifs, it's big and it's colorful. So that is right up my alley. What's different is it's long and narrow. So when I have my sampler wall, this will be a different shape. And I just, this I cannot put down. Okay, here we go. This is what I have finished so far. And I'll come in closer in a minute. So as I said, I started really with the second row and the lion. Look at that lion. Isn't he amazing? Okay, and then this bird. But as I'm stitching, I'm like, what is that little green creature? I think it's a frog. But these are the kind of things that I love about samplers. And, and I guess that's a reindeer next to the squirrel and the frog under a bird. Then look at this little ship with the sailors. Oh my gosh, look at the little scarves on the sailors. So much fun. Okay. There, here's a house. Now, there's a bird I need to put on the house, and that bird's going to be stitched over one. There's a bird on this tree down here, and he is over one, and I'm using the tenth stitch. If you've watched my floss tubes before, and I've got her because I'm going to show you some GGR finishes, Bridget Powers, 
I did over one and a full cross over 40. And it just about, it, it was too bulky. It was stretching out the linen. The Actually, the thread wasn't fitting. I didn't like how those threads looked, how the crosses laid on 40 count. And so I'm like, I've seen people talk about doing um, the 10 stitch. That's half of a cross on over one. Brenda talks about this. And so there it is. And you cannot tell that I did not do a full cross on that little gray bird. So from now on, over one on 40 and 46 count is gonna be the 10th stitch. So there's a lot of stitching on that house. And then there's this little, I'm not quite sure what it is. It's like a backwards R and that's what the pattern calls for. So if anybody knows what that is, I would love to know. Look at that beautiful lemon tree with the birds standing on what I think are turtles. Okay, this row, I had to do, I had to do this row. You can see I'm kind of jumping around. <laughs> this row is why I love quirky samplers. See that hiker? There's a game show in the United States called The Price is Right. And one of the games is called Cliffhangers. And on the game board, there's a little hiker. And as he climbs, he yodels. He reminds me of that guy. Yodel, yodel, yodel. Yeah. I know. You could have done without that, huh? Sorry. Okay. So there's my hiker and the tree. There's another tree. And then... You know, I don't know if a little girl stitched this, like so many other samplers we know typically, the age of the little girl. This one just has ATS, 1871, so I don't know if it was an adult or a little girl. But as I'm stitching, I kind of imagine things. So look at all these little blades of grass. You see those there? Those are full crosses. And then as she went along, I'm, I'm envisioning that her instructor or teacher said, N -n let me show you the back stitch. You should do grass in the back stitch. And there you can see the rest of the grass was done in a back stitch. So much fun. Okay, this little guy with the pipe, look at him. That pipe is um, stitched using back stitch. He is so cute. And then he's standing next to this really big peacock. <laughs> which has kind of like quilting patterns on it. But look at all the colors. Now, I mentioned I'm stitching this with over-dyed cotton floss. And some of this over-dyed cotton floss is variegated. I'm stitching with variegated floss in a different way than I normally stitch. And I don't know how you all stitch, and I know there's different ways to make your X's, but typically when I'm stitching with, say, a DMC or a silk that is not variegated, I'm do and I've got a row of 10, I'm going to do a half stitch, 10, and then go back and cross them, 10, to get the full X. If you do that with variegated, and I have, you tend to get stripey colors because the variegation can change pretty quickly. So with the variegated threads, I am doing a full cross, full cross, full cross. Just so that the variegation looks more natural and less stripey. This house is very much uh, variegated. And so you can see that. Same with the peacock. Lots of variegation in the different colors. Then, then um, I still have a lot of rows below. I still have three more rows of alphabets and numbers, and then they'll get into more band type motifs, which I think may have been used on 
pillowcases, uh, the way for people to mark their linens. Now, I don't know if this was a schoolgirl sampler and this was just an example of her abilities or if an adult did this, but it is so much fun. And this is cut to have the appropriate margin. So you can see it is a long, skinny sampler. And that's how it, how it will look when it's finished. So I still have, this is the how far I have in the alphabet bands. I still have all those bands to do. And I can't wait. I think that's gonna be so much fun. I still have a tree here. It's not a tree actually, it's a grapevine. There's a wreath here with angels. And then look at this birdhouse and this lady. So I have so many fun motifs yet to do. What I'm doing is I'll do some of these and then I'll go down and I'll do the alphabet and then I'll go back up so that I don't save the alphabet for last. I enjoy the motifs more, but this kind of keeps me going back and forth. So I've got some notes here because I think this is the first time I've ever stitched a sampler from Saxony, which is now Germany. And as I'm, as I'm working through this and looking at the motifs, I'm thinking, you know, I've never seen a lion before. Oh, I've never, that I can recall, see a hiker or a peacock like that one. I've seen lots of peacocks on Scottish samplers. They don't look like this one on the Saxony sampler. Um, so I did some research yesterday. Now I didn't go in depth, but I wanna share with you some of the things I found and I was amazed at, um, I found four Saxony samplers and the similar motifs that I found on these different samplers. So let me get to the right album for my floss tube, okay. Actually, they're on the internet. Here we go. All right. So the first, let me tell you a little bit about Saxony because I wanted to understand the area that this sampler may have come from. And the Kingdom of Saxony lasted from 1806 to 1918 and, it, and includes Dresden and Leipzig. Leipzig? I think I pronounced that correctly. Um, from 1871 on, Saxony was part of the German Empire, and now that area is Germany. I suspect the alphabet bands were embellishments, like I talked about, for towels, cuffs, pillowcases, and other household textiles. And and as I go through those bands and show you once I'm I get farther along, I think that'll really show. Um, so I did find some similar Saxon samplers. The first one is on the Scarlet Letter website. Now the Scarlet Letter um, produces all kinds of samplers. And the first one I found is entitled IRS 1738, a German Saxon band sampler. So I'm gonna show you some pictures. I'm gonna try and show them on my iPad. And I don't know how clear that really is. Um, there's some here that we can zoom in. Okay, there we go. All right, so. All right, look at that tree. Very similar <clears throat> to the tree in the GGR. <clears throat> sampler that I'm working on, excuse me. Um, this wreath is very similar. My sampler does not have Adam and Eve, but look at the size of that bird. Now it's a band sampler, right? So that is similar. Okay, and then another one that I found is also on the Scarlet Letter website. It's a German Saxon band sampler from 1795, and it has similar or the same motifs 
as the GGR ATS 1871. So this was really exciting when I found this. Remember my hiker? There he is on that one. The hiker, the lion. So let me go back here. Here he is. Look at the lion. I had never seen samplers with lions before until I started researching the Saxony samplers. Um, some of the other things that this sampler has, it has the lemon tree. <laughs> okay, there. See the lemon trees? Very similar. What else did I make a note of? Oh, angels. Angels in a wreath. Let me find that. So I haven't stitched it yet on on the ATS sampler, but on this Scarlet Letter sampler, there are angels by a wreath. Bear with me here. See if I took the time to learn to edit. Okay. I'll show you the angel in the wreath in a minute, but what blew me away, there's a lobster on this sampler. Why is there a lobster on a, a um, on a sampler from Saxony? If you know, and why is there a lion? I'm going to do more research, but that just fascinates me. Why is there a lobster on this sampler? There's a really big bird. Look at that. Next to the lobster. And of course the alphabet and the bands. Here's the entire sampler. And I know that's really hard to see. I'm sorry, that's the biggest picture, but I'm just, that's much bigger than the sampler that I'm stitching. Okay, so there's the wreath with the angels. My sampler that I'm working on has the same motif. Then I located um, the Whitney Antiques website, and they also have a German, uh, let's see, it's a German sampler. The name of it is DFF. 1791 and Whitney Whitney Antique says this is a superb band sampler worked in brightly colored silks with numerous images including a splendid image and depiction of Adam and Eve. Look at the lion. Look at the wreath with the angels. That that it looks like a tree. It's really a grapevine with grapes, that is also on the GGR sampler that I'm working on. Here's the entire size, and I'm sorry, I can't make this any bigger. This is all I've got. Um, but this sampler at Whitney Antiques also has um, Adam and Eve, and it has a lobster next to Adam and Eve. Right there would love to know the significance of that. I also found a German sampler on the website for the Boston Museum of Fine Arts. They have a German band sampler from 1757. It has the birdhouse and the grapevine that the GGR 1871 sampler has. So when I'm talking about the grapevine, I'm referring to this, okay? This is the GGR. And I said it also has the birdhouse, which I haven't stitched yet. See that right there? Okay, now here's the sampler that the Boston Museum of, Boston Museum of Fine Arts has. The birdhouse is a different color, but a very similar motif, see it there? And then the grapevine is on the next row down. 
similar motif. Okay, look, there is, I think that's a camel. There's a camel on a Saxony sampler, right? Is that right? Or maybe, maybe I'm just, I don't know. Of course, now I've lost it. Go back. Um, here it is. It just says 1757. Maybe not. Maybe that's a donkey. <laughs> but this is what I mean. I just love looking at these. And then look at this man right there by the birdhouse. So I'm going to do more research because I didn't find a ton of Saxony samplers what was really interesting to me, you know, the GGR sampler I'm working on is 1871. The four that I just showed you with similar motifs are from 1738 to 1795, and mine is 1871. I don't know what that means. I know that motifs were shared. But it's interesting to me that from 1738 to 1871, these samplers have very similar motifs. Why is that? So I've got to do some more research. I didn't spend a whole lot of time, maybe an hour on yesterday, looking at um, Saxony samplers and seeing what I could find. Okay. So as I mentioned, GGR is one of my most favorite designers. And when I was prepping for this floss tube and I was looking at the, the German Saxony sampler by GGR, I started pulling out finishes and patterns and I thought I would share them with you. These finishes I've shown before on floss tube and they're not framed yet and they're not ironed. Um, and then I'm going to show you my GGR patterns. There are just so many unique, beautiful patterns um, that I would love to share with you. Now, I'm going to start with a finish. I've shown this before. This is Bridget Powers or Bridget Power by GGR. This has the over one and this is 40 count light hazelnut with DMC. So I stitched this entire sampler in DMC, and it's just gorgeous. Any floss you use is gonna be gorgeous. But I have over one, a lot of those tassels are over one full crosses. Those grapes in the altar are over one full crosses. That was a good learning experience for me on my stitchy journey. No more, over one, if it's 40 and above, are gonna be 10 stitch. I just love this sampler. So that's a GGR, Bridget Powers, or Power, I can't remember. And I know I'm gonna forget the names of a lot of these. This is Mary Griffiths, another GGR. And this is probably 40 count. And using the, the silk swadage. You, you want to talk about a quirky sampler? First, those birds are beautiful. But then look at Mary. She's trying to balance a jug on her head. I'm not quite sure what the animals are next to her. <laughs> Is it a rat? It's supposed to be a dog? I don't know. There's one over here, too. Maybe that's a dog. I don't know. And really, it doesn't matter. I just, I just love it. I love the colors. I love those birds. Those were so much fun to stitch. So that's Mary Griffiths. Isabella Fox by GGR. Oh, that tree was so much fun to stitch. This looks like 40 count. It may be DMC. No, I think it's actually Swadage.
You can tell I like red, huh? A little Adam and Eve. I think that's the first Adam and Eve that I've done. And look at, there's those two angels. Very fun sampler to stitch. Okay, this is exciting. Now I've shown this before. This is the Betrothed by GGR. This is a German sampler. I haven't done any research or read about it. The Betrothed. Now I did this on Morning Coffee by XJU Design. Funky, I used all the called for colors, so I didn't change anything, but look at the knight, the groom. He's in peach, but look at these motifs, those, the, the vase of flowers and the lambs. This is such a fun, fun sampler. So why am I so excited to show it to you right now? Well, as I mentioned, I was at the Bristol Three Retreat at the attic in Mesa, Arizona. Let me get to my pictures. Vicki from Nita Work Press brought the original of the betrothed. And I'm gonna show it to you. There's the, there's the original. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, well. There's the original. Can you tell what it's stitched on? I did not know this, and I was excited and stunned when I saw this. Yeah, I'm just going to give up on how... Okay, that's so that's the vase of flowers. This is stitched on perforated paper. Can you see? It's kind of, you know, the ends are kind of falling off. Not linen, perforated paper, paper. Yeah, see, you can see it's coming apart there. What a, just an honor to see this original. You know, technology is not my friend today. <laughs> yeah, okay. To see the original on perforated paper and that Night, he's peach. So this is GGR's The Betrothed. And here is mine on linen, Morning Coffee 40 Count by XJU Design. So much fun, and you could certainly pull motifs out. It would be fun just to do those flowers in that urn separately. The bride was so much fun to stitch. Look at her dress. Really fun. So those are those are all the GGRs that I have stitched so far. When I was at the attic, if you look at their, I think it's their most recent newsletter, their sampler of the month for May, June is a GGR. And I picked it up. Let me find my notes on it because I want to tell you. Oh, you know what I haven't shown you? I actually have a GGR framed. And I think this is probably the most popular GGR out there. So many people have stitched this. And of course, that is the Red Deer Sampler. So here's mine. And I have to tell you, this is one of my all-time favorites. That border is so much fun to stitch. And those funky flowers, sign me up. This is me. This kind of sampler so speaks to me. And look at the red deer. This was framed by Total Framing in Virginia. I did put museum glass on this. I live in Southern California. It's very bright here. I don't want my stitching fading. So uh, let's see. I stitched this on Weeks, Weeks Dye Work Confederate Gray 35 count 
using the Gentle Arts cotton threads. And like I said, it's one of my all time favorites. And you've seen a lot of people stitching this. I know Sarah from Sarah's Stitchy Spot. She's working on the Red Deer Sampler right now. It's just beautiful. All right, so as I said, I kitted up their May-June sampler of the month, the Attic's May-June, and it's GGR's MT1814. And here it is. Now, one thing you should know about GGR patterns, she puts the antique on the cover. She does not put a stitched reproduction. And I think it's so helpful if you're able to go to the attic and you see the models. It makes a world of difference seeing them stitched. You, So again, this is GGR's MT1810. Look at all those great little motifs. I'm gonna stitch this on 46 count linen. And while I was at the attic, I got the Swall 103. Look at all the beautiful colors. Oh. So I can't wait to start that. That's a GGR I've got kitted up. I wanna share with you a bunch of my GGR patterns because there's such a wide variety. And again, I think that many of them are just so unique. The first one is Catherine Thomas, 1868. And this is a red sampler. So you've got the antique here and the reproduction here. Most of GGRs are only the antique on the cover. This one, mm -mm -mm. this is French, Virginie Grimaud, 1845. That, I believe that's a church, it is. That uh, talks to the little Catholic girl in me, um, but I love all the motifs too. If you have done a GGR, I would love to see it. If you can post a comment below, tell me where I, if you've got an Instagram that I can go and look at and see your GGRs, your completed GGRs, I would love to see them. So that's Virginie. The next one, I wanna start them all. Anne, oh boy. There's the name. I don't, I, I'll butcher it. But look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? It says transcription of an old sampler from the collection of GGR. This one, she does have another picture, a bigger picture of the antique. This is Solomon's Temple. It is the south view of Solomon's Temple. Oh. Okay, I want to start this one today. Today is the 4th of July, by the way. And in the United States, this is a holiday for us. This is our Independence Day. So today... Um, Hopefully I'll have time to stitch. Okay, my, my next GGR. Jane Southward, 1836. I've seen a lot of people stitch this. La Maison Rouge, the red house. Look at this sampler. Oh. Beautiful. I have the next one is a it's two samplers brought to you by GGR and Needlework Press. The first one is IDL 1806, 
And the second one is EH1811. That's the cover. Look at those motifs and the colors. I love the blues and the browns and the greens. Oh, so pretty. Okay, let me see if there's a picture of the other one in here. There must be, or I'm losing my mind. I think that's the same, no, this, here it is. They're similar, they're not the same. This is the other sampler. Okay. Anne Ariel, I think it's A-U-R-I-O-L. motifs in this sampler. There's so much goodness in this one. So many good things to stitch. Now this one, I have seen somebody stitching it. It is gorgeous. This is the lady in red spinning her wool. Like I said, I've seen someone stitching this. I'm sorry, I don't, it's been a while since I've seen it. I wish I had like marked it or tagged it so I could go back to it, but um, <laughs> there's so much going on in this sampler and it's so pretty. See, these are samplers, not samplers that you see very often and they're so beautiful. I'm going to have to live to be 200 to have time to stitch them all. Hannah Hammonds, 1845. Look at this. Look at the color. Adam and Eve and the tree in the middle. I love these urns with the flowers. This is my GGR extravaganza. Okay, Adelaide, no, yeah, Adelaide Sestel, 1828. Some very unique motifs, look at this. Okay, there's a carriage. Look at the gate. This, no, that's not what I think it is. Okay, but look at this, this balcony. One more. Oh, I lied. Two more. Okay. A Fair Lady Sampler by GGR. I was um, at the attic and I was sitting next to Lisa Smith and we just started going through the different GGR patterns and I bought a bunch of these when I was at the attic. I don't know, is that a pair? What else is in this sampler? We'll look at the birds. Wait, where's the birds? <laughs> yeah, here's the birds. Okay, last. Elise Schluter, 1866. Look at the border on this sampler. There is so many motifs. This is a loaded sampler. I love loaded samplers. While I think that a Fair Lady sampler is beautiful, there's too much white space for my taste. This is what I like, load them up. The more complicated, the more detailed, that's what I want. It reminds me, I'm working on um, a French sampler um, by, do you think I can remember? So much fun aging. Yvonne Leclerc. And I can't remember the French designer and I've done a bunch of their work. Anyway, 
that border is very similar. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So that's my GGR extravaganza. I'm gonna check my notes, see what else I have, because I still have a lot of stuff on the table. Um, so I went to the Stitch Nanigans retreat that was in Las Vegas that was hosted by 1884 Stitchery. And my friend Mary Darling met me there and we just had so much fun. We visited the cross stitch store Stitcher's Paradise in Las Vegas. If you're in Vegas, you have to go to this store. First off, the people are so friendly and so helpful and it looks like it's a little store. That store is jam packed with all kinds of stitchy goodness, all kinds of patterns. I did not bring down what I bought there. I will show you perhaps in another floss tube. I bought so many patterns that I hadn't seen that were, some of them were, I think, out of print. Um, so that was so much fun. And um, as I said, Stitch Nanigans was hosted by 1884 um, Stitchery. And I wanna show you some of the samplers that are for sale on her website because these are some unique samplers as well. The first one is Francis Eden, 1809. Now this is reproduced with the, with the permission of the Philadelphia Museum of Art, the Whitman Sampler Collection. Oh, okay, there's a loaded sampler, a loaded full sampler. Look at that, two houses and look at all the angels. Oh, this is a beautiful sampler. The next one is Jane Ballard, and this is reproduced with the permission of the Worcester Art Museum. And I believe that's in Massachusetts. Look at this sampler. Oh. Jane Ballard. And you can get these on the 1884 Stitchery website. This one, boy, this sure looks French. I don't know. I haven't done any research or read up on it. It's Helene Sorensen, 1896. <gasps> Look at that beautiful sampler. Love the dog. Love the colors. The font on that alphabet. Mm. Just a beautiful, beautiful sampler. Okay, and the last, no, I have two more from 1884 Stitchery. Um, this is Historic Stitches. This is John Foster 1885 sampler. Look at that sampler. Oh, oh my God, that house and the trees. Okay, I'm just gonna have to retire now and stitch. I mean, I'm never gonna be able to finish all of these. Look at that. And the beehive. This is a beautiful, beautiful sampler. Okay. And the last one from 1884 Stitchery. This is um, Macintosh or McIntosh samplers. And it's the Jane Harris sampler. Love those colors. This, that looks like, I, and I am no expert, but don't you see flowers like that on a Scottish sampler? And maybe that's what this is. I don't know. I just wanted to share it with you because I think those are beautiful samplers. And again, you can get those from 1884 Stitchery. Um, also in April, I went to a small retreat at the attic um, and it was a bunch of friends getting together and stitching. And we got to visit with 
Vicki and Megan from Needlework Press and we they invited us into their studio. Vicki had us into her home. Oh, there's just so many samplers and things to look at. It is such a treat to go there. And I wanted to share with you some of um, some of the, the patterns that I bought that are from Needlework Press. And the first is Mary McAllister, 1824. Some of these we actually did see at our visit, which is such a treat. Okay, Jane Tyndall. And I know probably most of you know these samplers, but I just wanna show them anyway because I think they're beautiful. Oh, Elena Galvez, 1895. Look, look, look at the guy on the bicycle. When do you see that on a red sampler? Look at some of those motifs. I had to buy this just, I love the font and I love these motifs, especially the guy on the bike with his dog chasing him. Isabella Johnstone. Now, Vicki's husband is a veterinarian for, and, and I'm gonna butcher it, but I know that with, he works with cows. I'm not sure what that's called exactly, but she found a sampler with a cow on it, and I just think it is so cool. Isabella Johnstone. So those are a few of the many Needlework Press um, patterns, but those are the ones that I most recently purchased at my visit to the attic. Um, Katie Strachan was part of our group at the attic. I had never met Katie. She is so talented. She brought with her her Brita Mart casket that she made. If you are not familiar with her, go to her floss tube, Katie Strachan, and there is an episode dedicated to the Brita Mart casket. And it is um, in between, I'm, I'm looking at my notes here. It's in between episodes 45 and 46. Go look at that. I have never seen anything like that. Katie is so talented. And she's gonna be teaching at summer school at the attic this year. So, so excited for her and her work is stunning. I'm also really excited to tell you that while I was at this um, little retreat, um, I got to see Tanya from the Scarlet House and I purchased a sampler from Tanya that she has reproduced. And it is Harriet Taylor, 1842. Just love, love the border, love that house. It's so unique. And I have pictures on my iPad I wanna show you the sampler. Here is the original that Tanya reproduced. So just look at that beautiful reproduction. Okay, that's not it. There's a more close. Look at the beautiful pattern. I just love that. Love the trees behind the house. The house is beautiful. She's in rough shape, that's okay. I'm gonna, at some point, when I win the lottery, I'm gonna send her to Total Framing. And I know they do restoration work and I'm gonna ask them to frame her and preserve her. She's such a beautiful sampler. So that's so exciting when you get to, oh, when you get to purchase an antique sampler that someone like Tanya has, um, reproduced, just amazing. Um, 
All right, so let's talk about the Bristol Three retreat. I've attended all three Bristol retreats at the attic. Um, this year, Claudia Dutcher Kissler of Dutch Treat Designs was one of the presenters. And really, Claudia is an expert on Bristol samplers. She has a great website I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. Just as a reminder, Bristol samplers were worked by girls living in George Mueller's orphanage in Bristol, England. There are documented orphan samplers that were worked from the 1840s through the early 1900s at this orphanage. Now, this particular Bristol retreat, Claudia talked about multicolored Bristol samplers. Most of you are probably familiar with the red Bristol samplers and I should have brought mine down. I have one that I'm working on and it's Mary 395 by Hands Across the Sea and it's a red Bristol sampler, gorgeous. But Claudia talked about multicolored Bristol samplers at this retreat and I took some notes from her lecture what she said, and let me just show you one of the multicolored Bristol samplers. This is called May Angels Guard the One I Love. And this is um, one of the samplers, the patterns that Claudia gave us. Now she said that only 20% of the girls stitched a multicolored sampler. So the first sampler that they did would be a red sampler. And then perhaps if the girls were very good at stitching or they really enjoyed it, they could stitch a multicolored sampler. And it's a second sampler as all of the girls were required to stitch a red sampler first. The orphanage had a needlework curriculum just like any other certified girls school in that time. Um, younger girls would start their stitching on perforated paper. And I'm gonna show you perforated paper in a minute. Um, on the multicolored samplers, we'll see a variety of stitches, including satin stitches, pulled eyelet, chain, and back stitch. Characteristics of a multicolored Bristol sampler include hem stitched or a turned under edge, and higher count linen compared to what was used in the red, excuse me, the red samplers. Now, Claudia had some, she has a lot of Bristol samplers um, in her collection, antique original Bristol samplers. And some of the multicolored Bristol samplers she showed us are this big. Right? And when we stitch them, they're like this. So you can imagine how tiny the count was on what the girls stitched on. She said that approximately 160 Bristol samplers have surfaced and about 20% of those are the multicolored. And she said, rarely will we see red thread on the multicolored sampler. I don't know, Was maybe the girl was tired of the red from her first sampler, I'm not sure. But May Angels Guard, the one I love, is the sampler pattern, like I said, that Claudia gave us at the Bristol Three Retreat. This is a spot sampler, meaning it is comprised of motifs only. Remember, on the red samplers, you're gonna see rows of alphabets and numbers and rows of motifs, not on the multicolored. Now, she pointed out a few motifs and I thought that was really interesting. The first is this little dog. This dog is Dash. That's Queen Victoria's dog, who is a King Charles Cavalier Spaniel. A Bible, she said about 90% of the Bristol samplers had a Bible and the Bristol bird. Now, if I was paying really good attention, I would know if it's this one or this one. One of those is the Bristol bird. So on the back of the pattern, here's what Claudia had to say about this particular sampler. She said when the orphan girls stitched their samplers, they used the same patterns for their motifs, but the placement and colors of the thread they used varied. 
We assume that the colors they used were colors that they liked. Their choices also depended upon the thread colors that were available at the time. And I'm going to stitch this on, I'm looking for my linen, 46 count. If you could see everything that I have here. Of course, I cannot find it now. It's a fox and rabbit 46 count, and it's a light purple, and it goes so pretty with the threads. Okay. <laughs> I know I brought it down here. No, I'm not seeing it. Okay, so let me back up. As a gift to the attendees at the Bristol Three, Jean Lee, who is the fabulous owner and stitcher of The Attic, she gave us as a gift these um, spool holders. Now the wood, I believe, is from um, um, Beth Twist's farm. Her husband made these for us and Jean gave them to us as a gift. Now mine on top says, may angels guide, or excuse me, may angels guard the one I love. Bristol 3, 2013. These are the colors for this sampler. And this is so cool. Look, it lifts up so that I can pull out a spool if I need to. And oh, I wish I had that fabric because it's so pretty. It's like a light lavender. The, 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 um, the model was stitched on Wood Smoke by Tabby Cat. Um, and Kathy Bourne stitched this. It would look beautiful on wood smoke and it would look good on the other linen if I can find it. <laughs> it's gonna take me two hours to clean up, but I can't wait to stitch on a multicolored um, Bristol sampler. Now, Claudia has a wonderful website. Please go check out her website because there's so much great information on her website. It's bristolsamplers.com. In addition to all the information, there's a Bristol Green Sampler, and she did talk about that at our retreat. It's just fascinating, and someday I'm gonna get to Bristol, England and be able to tour the museum there. I would love to do that. Also presenting at Bristol Three was Vicki and Megan Jeanette from Needlework Press. Um, both Claudia and Vicki have extensive collections of stitching on perforated paper. One of the patterns that they gave us at the retreat is Mrs. Julia D. Brown's portfolio. These are on perforated paper. And Vicki and Megan gave us, I'm gonna take this out. This is perforated paper. It's, it's um, when I Googled perforated paper, it tells me Perforated paper is a heavyweight, stiff paper that has been punched into an even grid suitable for stitching. It's a nice alternative to Ada, especially for, especially for stitching smaller ornaments or bookmarks that you want a more rigid finish to. So there you go. And it is, it's thicker. It's not like regular paper. And I am going to use the Soie de J 103, Avera Soie, excuse me, Avera Soie 103 silk. And I'm gonna try stitching it on perforated paper. I'm so excited to try this. But these are just gorgeous. So thank you, Vicki and Megan. I'm gonna I'm gonna try perforated paper. Now Claudia Dutcher also has another website for perforated paper. Um, it's called 
perforatedpaper.net. And that website, she completely focuses on perforated paper. Um, what I found out is perforated paper needlework was most popular between 1860 and 1900. Vicki from Needlework Press, as I said, she lectured on perforated paper. And then both Vicki and Claudia shared their beautiful collection of needlework done on perforated paper. Um, so excited to try something new and I'll let you know how that goes. I've got so many things that I want to work on. Um, I do want to share with you a little bit of haul that I received in the mail and then we'll wrap up. I know this is a much longer floss tube than I usually do, but oh my gosh, I've got so much good stuff to share. So first, you may recall that Nicola Parkman for her 60th birthday from Hands Across the Sea Samplers offered a red box full of samplers from all over Europe. And, and we're taking a tour of Europe through the samplers. Barry from Stitch Folk made a bag for us and you can purchase this from Barry at Stitch Folk. She's on Instagram and Etsy with the hands across the sea, letters from Europe. That was the red box with all of those patterns. And this is a beautiful bag, just like all of Barry's bags are, fully aligned. And I just love that project bag. The other thing I received in the mail is also from Hands Across the Sea samplers. And these are tea towels of samplers. They are so well done. They look like Somebody said, I think I'm just going to frame these and put them on the wall and, and say that I stitched them because they're that good. They're beautiful tea towels. Nicola told us that in the UK, um, they put tea towels on um, the handles on the front of their ovens. They call it something different. I'm sorry, Nicola, I don't remember the name of what you call your ovens. These are so pretty though. I don't want any food to get splattered on them, so I'm not so sure. This is um, this is a Scottish sampler and the name just went out of my head. And you're screaming it at me, hold on. No, I just showed you Ann Thomas. Jane Fittis, thank you. Jane Fittis, this is a tea towel, but look at the colors. Nicola um, was selling these on her website. They sold out. I don't know if she's going to get more in. Oh, and Anne Ufendel. This is one I've got kitted up, ready to stitch. I haven't stitched it yet. Catherine from Stitching in Costume, one of her floss tubes this year. She shows it. She finished it. It's beautiful. <sighs> That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for coming back to watch me after I took a little break and I will have lots more to share next time. Hopefully my goal is to do a floss tube about every three weeks. Thank you again and I'll see you real soon. Bye.